In other words, when soldiers participate in war, they conceive war as a form of theater or entertainment or spectacle because it's too much for them to deal with consciously. They have to see it as acting or see themselves as acting because they, as, as a defense mechanism because they can't really grapple with the sheer horror of it. But I would argue just the opposite and use Jones and perhaps Faulkner as examples. Warfare is anything but theatrical in this case, allowing soldiers to express feelings that they would otherwise conceal from themselves, deeply sexual ones in the case of Bell, and um, certainly in Henry and Charles Bonn and Absalom and, and other characters in Faulkner. There's an overwhelming sense of, of sexuality bound up with war in the everyday. Um, but the point I'm trying to make is that despite the resurgence of interest in Jones as a war writer, the man really wasn't. For Jones, much like Faulkner, war was just an extension of the home life, a continuation of dramas that unfolded there. To the extent that Jones was interested in combat, it was as a purveyor of feeling or a, a release of deeply held sentiments, like Dahl's latent homosexuality or Welsh's grumbling realization that all men are, quote, property, which he keeps mumbling to himself at the end. And to the degree, the degree that war has a function then, in Jones's novel, it's as a catalyst and not as a label. At the same festival where Fussell spoke, Robert Owen Butler talked at length about what war had meant to him in Vietnam as a writer, how it showed him certain sounds and settings and taught him to feel things. And I agree with that sentiment. And while my own experiences in the war were you know, rather limited compared to Jones and what I think his generation went through, I, I, th I think the one thing that I learned there and the one truism I think that holds for all, all combat is that is it is beautiful at times. Tim O'Brien said this in The Things They Carried and Stanley Kubrick once said that in an interview with Michael Hare and, and countless other authors have said it also, possibly even Jones, although I didn't actually find it directly. But Robin, Robert Owen Butler highlight, highlighted it that day when he said that you know, the rockets and mortars, the tracer shots, bombs, the whole thing is like a wellspring for fiction, a sensual smorgasbord. And I, that's why James Jones' dedication on the front of the thin red line says, to the most heroic of all human endeavors, war and warfare, may they never cease to give us the pleasure, excitement, and adrenal stimulation that we need, it was only partially sarcastic. War for Jones was undoubtedly evil, but it was also powerful and animating and it enlivened his senses. Indeed, it made him a writer. Whether you would call him a war writer on account of that, I don't know. In my estimation, he's just a writer. Thank you. <laughs> Do you have any uh, questions? Or I don't open up for discussion if any of you want to talk about The Thin Red Line or any of his other books. Right. Um, well, I, I've done a few searches on uh, just online journals, JSTOR and Muse and those places, and there are a number of articles coming up on Jones in um, Speculative Philosophy and The Thin Red Line even, and I, I, I can't begin to understand what they're saying there, but there are serious pieces being written on what, what the, the book means, and I, I think they focus more on the movie than on the, the literature itself. There are, I've seen articles in a lot of military history, actually, is, is coming to light, especially in, in the wake of the current wars, and Jones is often cited in that. Um, it's depicting, you know, the real experience of soldiers. Um, I, where else? Political science. Um, th there's been a lot of debate as to what Jones's real politics were, and I think they did vary at times. But um, I, where else? Yeah, I mean, it, it's been across the board, really. I mean, I think it is a testament to Jones as a writer that he's got field writers from all these different fields working on him. Um, I don't know if the same could be said about. Mailer or Faulkner, or even Hemingway for that matter. Um, it also shows that, that I think Jones lends himself to visual adaptation in ways that, that other writers haven't maybe. Um, and, and we can talk about that too. I, I, I think one of the most interesting things and what I would have liked to have talked about is the way Jones's books have been translated into films because they're very different from the novel, but in many ways they're also the same. And I, I think um, the, the recent one by Terrence Malick is in many ways, despite what a lot of critics have said, very faithful to the book. Um, it has sort of this um, sort of 
majestic portrayal of the jungle. The, the island is very mystical and the forces of nature overwhelming the soldiers. And, and I, don't, I don't think there's anything romantic about the jungle in the theater end line. It's, it's horrible. You know, it's fighting life there is just as wretched as it gets. But, um, but at the same time, I think, I, I think Malik does capture sort of the, the real experience of soldiers in a way that other war films haven't, for me at least, and I think in a way that Jones's fiction did. So, other questions? Yeah, Joy. Well, I, I don't like to talk too much about my own <laughs> experience in the war. I, I, I tend to write about it in my fiction, but um, I actually read The Thin Red Line when I was over there um, the first time. And I, um, yeah, last night, Winston Groom talked about how he read this book right before he went overseas to battle. Um, and it, it, I, there's something really strange about this book, and that is that you realize the, the characters in this book really are real. I mean, they're, they're, they're stock types in a way, but they, but you know, in, in the army, I think there are only six or seven types of people, you know, and, and he gets them all right, you know. The, the Welsh, I mean, I knew Welsh, you know, I mean, he's, he shows up in every, in every platoon, I think, and it's, um, I, I don't know if I'd call them stock characters, but they're just certain traits that show up there and, and more, and, and I think, you know, the really scary part about this book is how little war has changed in 50 years. You know, you hear all these talks about, you know, God knows what kind of technology they have now, bunker busting bombs, and you know, even the end of World War II was fought with a nuclear one. But you know, and you get down to it, war is still composed of men living in dirt, digging trenches. You know, helmets are Kevlar now instead of steel, but it's the same same equipment. You know, and 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 I think more important, what what sets Jones's novels apart from the other ones is that he really does show what it's like to be a soldier. I mean, he really does capture the horror of that. I mean, he asks the most basic questions. What it means to be enlisted. What it means to, to know that you have a dog tag around your neck and that you're drafted. You know, what it, what it means to know that you are just a cog in the machinery of death. And he asks, how do people come to terms with that? How do they, how do they live with that thought, that knowledge? And it's a very, I mean, it's a horrifying realization that I think every soldier comes to at some point in serving. And I think you know, unlike a lot of the other books I've read, it, Jones, he deals with that stuff. I don't know if he provides an answer per se, but he definitely, he struggles with these questions in a way that I think few authors have. And I, and I think that's why Jones will enjoy even more of a resurgence in coming years when more soldiers come back. I, I actually taught this book at University of Illinois at Chicago when I was teaching a freshman class there last year. And I had a couple soldiers in my class who had just come back from the Iraq War and they wanted to know, um, you know, what this book was about. And we, we watched a bit of the movie and read some excerpts. And, you know, they said the same thing I did. It's, this book is, you know, it's 50 years old, but it, it could not be more relevant and true to what's going on there. And, and you look at all these, pardon the French, but all these bullshit, you know, movies like Stephen Ambrose and Band of Brothers, and, you know, which are fun to watch, but, you know, they don't really probe the psychology or the depths of a person in war the way Jones does. I don't think, I don't think they care, frankly, the way Jones did about what it means to be drafted or, I mean, to be wearing a uniform in a place where you could die on account of that. Um, and I, I, I think, um, yeah, it, for me and for I think a lot of other people who have been in that, and, and much less so than Jones, but even so, it, there's something really stirring about Jones's fiction that I think will come alive again. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned that Chicago conference where uh, Robert Olin Butler was. Uh, did he mention anything about returning to uh, writing fiction about uh, Vietnamese or the Vietnam War or anything like that. I know a couple of years ago he switched over to science fiction and he just had that uh, success uh, with Sent from a Strange Mouth, which right. had the Vietnamese voice, the Vietnamese who came over to the United States. And next in line, at least he said at 